Hello fellow Pletzers. I've done a couple Filebot videos just to help new people get started with it and I wanted to do an update because I've updated my expressions to a little bit more of an advanced format. Today I'll rename multiple movies and TV shows will be just similar. I won't show that. So the expression really is just the name, N for name bracketed, Y for year bracketed, surrounded by the parentheses, space dash space, which is the official separator. I know some people will use just a dot or a period, and Plex will work with that, but Filebot Excel itself uses this by default, and Plex shows it as an example primarily. So then I've added in a VF for video format, which will list the resolution. That has to be bracketed, and no space is needed because this handles subtitles and it will automatically look at the subtitle file, determine the language, and assign the language code. The TV expression, very similar, name of the series bracketed, the, the season episode format bracketed, T would be the episode name, I don't know why it's T, but it is. Everything separated with a space dash space, and then again, VF for video format, and again, subtitle. So let's see that in action. So I've got one, two, three, four, five movies here. One of them is there expressly because it's not in the movie database. This is a documentary that's listed at Internet Movie Database, but not the movie database that Plex pulls from. And then this movie here is already properly named. I want to show you how that tr shows up in, in Filebot. So I can back up to the master directory, right click, choose open in Filebot. I'm running elementary OS, a Linux distro. I assume it will be similar for anybody using Mac or Windows. By default, you'd normally hit match and you'd pick from the TV database for shows or the movie database for movies. Well, if you have custom expressions, you come down here and I can just choose my custom expression. To add them, you'd go to the bottom and click edit preset and then you'd click new preset and basically just give it a name and type out what I showed earlier in the word processor. Click save and you're done. And then you do the same thing and create the TV show one. So once they're created, you no longer click on the green match button. Instead, you come down here and you click your custom preset. So Filebot will do its thing. This enter the font is going to throw it off because it's not in the database. Sometimes Filebot just gets thrown off. So I can't pick any of these, they're the wrong movies. All I can do is skip. And sometimes when Plex is, or I'm sorry, when Filebot's confused, all you have to do is hit skip if you can't find your movie or TV show on the list, and it may still find it by default. So you'll see, because it's not in the database, it's down at the bottom now. Trust Me was already properly renamed and that threw up a green dot in front of it to let you know that it doesn't need to be renamed. And if you've never seen it, Filebot's also capable of throwing up a red dot, and that means it can't rename a file. Now, it won't happen on my computer, but it will happen on my Synology NAS. Sometimes I go through to check how I've manually renamed things just to maybe add episode names if I didn't do it. Maybe I had everything else right, but I was too lazy to put the episode names into the file when I was manually doing multiple seasons of TV shows. But on the Synology, if I have a typo, maybe say, say I had trust me already on the server and I use a lowercase m for me, well Filebot would find that on the computer, it could rename it, but it can't rename it on the NAS because of just an uppercase or lowercase mistake. So this dot would be red. And you'd be able to see the difference, and you'd immediately know, oh, it's, it's a 
file issue, a renaming issue on the specific device, and I could go to the NAS and fix it that way. To fix it, I'd have to just add in some extra characters so um, the, the operating system, the NAS, thought it was a new name, and then I could rename it properly to get rid of the typo. You won't run into that on a computer, but FileBot is capable of showing a red dot, and I wanted to explain one of the reasons you might see it. So even though this actual media name, which came from NZB Hydra, wasn't renamed properly, the folder was Plex can figure out, or, or FileBot can figure out what it is. And this one happened to be 1080p media, and you see FileBot discovered that, and it added the appropriate um, notation. This movie is a 720p version, and FileBot discovered that fine too. This one is an SD version, and it has a subtitle. Um, the movie was named pretty close, but the subtitle was all gibberish, and Plex actually figured that out. Now, file I keep saying Plex instead of FileBot. As you can see, I'm not a professional YouTuber. My videos are not monetized. I just do this to try to help people out. So if you don't want to cut me slack, reconsider. So back to subtitles. So FileBot can discover the language, but it can't tell one version of a subtitle apart from another. So say I had a movie that had foreign audio parts and there was the hearing impaired version of the subtitle and the normal one. I'd have three subtitles. They might be labeled 01, 02, 03. And FileBot would throw up an error when I went to rename things, and I'd have to delete two of them, and I could only rename one of them. Well, you'd have to open up, open them up in a text editor to see which was which, and manually rename things there. You'd have one in the in the right format. If you have all three, the four subtitles are going to be quite small compared to the other two with the SDH or the hearing impaired version slightly larger than the regular one. If you have all three, you don't even have to look inside, you know which is which. If you just have two, um, and they're both similar sizes, well, the slightly smaller one is the regular one, and the other one could be labeled SDH. If you only have one, and you really want to label it correctly, you have to open it with a text editor and you'll look for things like birds chirping, engine racing, music playing. Those extra bits of, of information would make it the SDH version. You have a text message. Sorry, my phone's going off while I'm recording this. So anyway, at this point, all you have to do is click rename. And at this point, um, FileBot looks for illegal characters. You have to validate to remove them and then you can continue, and it's renamed files. And if we go back in, everything except this is renamed, takes care of the file. Um, um, the Boy, I'm going brain dead. It takes care of the subtitle, but again, you have to open it up to see if it is a regular subtitle or if it has the extra information where you'd want to label it as SDH. And this doesn't, so I can leave it alone. So that's about it. Again, not a professional YouTuber, but thanks for watching, and I only do this video to help people out with FileBot. If I learn a little bit more, I'll do another video. Take care.